today, we're hitting a new body of water. Oh my god! Oh my god! One of the most beautiful lakes we've ever fished. Loaded with big bass. Get ready. This is Monster Lake. Also, it's currently down about five feet. The bottom down. We're hitting new lake today. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're out here in Munster, Texas, a little northwest of uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area. And we're gonna be hitting Munster Lake. This place looks amazing. Looks can be deceiving, but we even saw a video on YouTube. I think it was by Metroplex Bass Addicts. They had uh, won a tournament out here, if I'm not mistaken, and then also came back not too long after, caught multiple four or five pounders, just killing it. As soon as you walk up to the ramp, I mean, all you see is timber a lot of rock along the edges although the level is low here right now you can tell so maybe there's not too much submerged we're gonna see but plenty of fantastic habitat for the bass today we brought out the hot tamale the bass but we're the only ones in this lot today <laughs> no one is out here on the water it's taco tuesday ladies and gentlemen i guess everyone's out there having lunch instead of trying to catch some fish it says no water skiing inner tubing or wakeboarding or anything like that you probably get messed up with all these trees here it would not be good to get stabbed by one of those when you fall basic stuff doesn't look like there's a slot limit or anything if we get some nice fish we'll probably put them in the well and it's going to be our first time fishing this lake this motor mount has been fantastic and then you got these guys right here to prevent the motor from shifting left to right so much better than what comes on these stock ranger boats when you first get them come here see come on <laughs> so you can see it is a pretty small lake zoom in a little bit the freshly cracked screen got to watch out when you're casting a drop shot those little weights they'll get you water temp is 52 53 degrees so far let's go guys come on good boy come on Finn good boy all right it's time to party we figured we'd work the cove by the ramp just real quick see if they've got some bait pushed up shallow but uh, if not we're gonna venture out and see the rest of this place we're starting off with None other than some moving baits. I think she's got a chatter bait up front. I'm going with uh, this guy right here. This is the mini Buka Bull Gill, okay? So there's like full-size versions of the Buka Bull Shad, of course, which has been made famous. And then they've got these smaller versions partnered with Ketchco of the Bull Shad and the Bull Gill. So this is more of that gill profile shad color, obviously, or like the bone, one of my favorite colors in this bait right here. It's got a little bit more weight than the baby Bull Shad. And so, uh, you know, if I want to drop it down a little bit lower in the water column, I can. I just grabbed this thing to start off with. If we don't find them quick on some moving baits, we're probably going to be switching it up. And so, the clarity, you'd say 6 out of 10 on clarity. It's not like murky like I thought it might have been. So, I actually have some decent clarity here. These fish will definitely be seeing these baits just uh, if they're willing to chase today. With the overcast skies and a little bit of wind, I think it's a very good possibility. I'm just going to cast in between all the cover I see, maybe even give it a little half turn and pause. If there's anything suspended on these branches right here, we gonna catch them. Crankbaits would be another great alternative. I just grabbed this thing to get started, but a lot of potential right here. Let's cover uh, a couple different bases. So you throw the moving bait and I'm gonna throw that jig for a second. We've switched it up. I'm gonna throw this jig for a moment while she continues to rock the chatterbait, boost the confidence up, see if they're hanging out on the trees. Let's go on the uh, little juicy jig. We'll call it a quarter ounce. And then I've actually got a nuke punch on there. It adds some nice bulk and a little extra weight to what would normally be a slower fall on these finesse jigs. 15 feet right here, huh? This is very promising. First one on the jig, there we go. There we go. Get him, Finn. Oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. All right, our first ever bass out here on Munster Lake comes on the little juicy jig. Say what's up, Zeke. Ah, natural color with the green pumpkin purple nuke punch on the back. Dogs are hyped, gets us excited. 
<sighs> I didn't feel that bite. I just saw the line swimming to the left. So I went ahead and set that hook. Y'all, let me get this well in gear. That was on this one right here, this big stump. Watch out, Zeke. I said watch out. Gosh darn it. I said watch out, gosh dang it. Y'all are gonna get a jig hook in your foot if you don't simmer down. All right, let's roll. Yeah, for the first one ever out here, that was a uh, good, good quality. I mean, obviously it's not a big bass, but it's not a small dink either. So I can try and cast past the cover sometimes with these crankbaits so that it's like already down to the diving depth I would like in case they're suspended, like say on these stumps out here. But on that last cast, I got basically right in the middle of them, not past them. So I want it to dive down quickly. So instead of keeping my rod tip up like this, the trolling motor is kind of in the way you might've seen me kind of dip it off down to the right. That way I can get to the depth faster with the rod tip lower to the water. Always good to have like a 45 degree angle on those crankbaits. That way when they hit, your rod is already loaded up and helping get that lip penetration. Something like a go-to or a reaction rod is great for stuff like this. Just basically medium heavy, fast action or medium moderate tip. That way you got a little bit more play in the tip. So if those fish are head shaking and everything, they're not just going to rip out those treble hooks. You use like a real stiff rod on these crankbaits. And oftentimes you'll actually give those fish slack as they shake their head the slack is created where the softer tip will just kind of keep there from being slack. It will just keep extending and bending, blah, blah, blah. So it works out well for crankbaits and keeping those fish penned. We've also got braid on this reel. It's 30 pound braid, so it does cut through the water pretty good and actually gets close to our diving depth. We just have a leader. So you'll see right here, this is our uh, FG knot. And uh, it's a relatively short leader at the moment. I started off longer, no doubt, and I'm just using whatever random crank this is right here. I think we got it in a mystery tackle box. Big sales on mystery tackle box, by the way, throughout uh, November and the rest of the holidays here. So if y'all are looking to try a mystery tackle box, they send you different baits every single month. Check that link down in the description. Subscription service. New boxes of baits every single month. Changing things up and going to a bit of a deep diver, y'all. These are great as the water temperature starts to cool, actually. These skinny square bills, flat-sided crankbaits. Got a little bit more of a realistic winter swim to them because they're a little bit tighter. Um, you know, the typical crankbaits are going to wobble a whole lot left to right. This is a tighter wobble, almost like the fish swimming in the cooler water. Checked out some shallow trees. That was a bad idea. I think we're going to take a look at the river. Big tree at one point. Yeah, look how. That's the only grass that we can see. That's the only really grass. It's... Oh. Yes. oh, he was there. Yeah, he's there. You got him? He's stuck. He's on a limb, but he's there. I see, I see, I see. Alright, we're gonna go get him. He was. I don't feel him anymore. That's okay. I think you still have him. I saw that fish flail. I wonder if you got it off the hook. We're gonna about to find out. First bite. No, an ace lock. See, I think you might have him still. I'm trying to see if that could be. I, I think I just felt a head shake, maybe. Okay, what do we do here? Where could this thing be? A little slack. Oh, <gasps> he's on. Where's this fish? There he is. There he is. Oh, gosh. Keep it tight. Okay. Oh, my goodness. You got it. Ah. Uh, Pull him back. Not much we can do. Uh, where did he go? I think I have him. Oh, Devin, you got a good. Oh my god. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. Okay. Uh -huh. Off the beaver dam in the river. Oh my god. Come on, Finn. Oh. What you know about that? In like two inches of water. <laughs> <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> Oh, bandito bug Zeke, what do oh, you think? Thank God I hooked him as good as I did because he wasn't going nowhere. Uh -uh. Ten. <laughs> Got it. Oh, <laughs> didn't even see that. All right, I'm throwing the jig. I just put the freaking jig down. Oh my gosh. I think I had one too. Oh, I have him. I still have him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're doubled up. We're doubled. Oh. Doubled up. That's a good one too, babe. Oh my <laughs> god. I was gonna say. I thought maybe. Oh no. Three in the well. Yeah, that was in the same spot you casted, by the way. I just Yo. brought it down. Yeah, I just, it was a little to the left of where you caught that one. 
Seriously? Yeah. Oh I just gosh. I just worked it down the bump. Okay, so what was maybe even crazier than Devin catching that fish off of this uh, beaver dam, as far as like the landing process went, was that I got one right after, just like slightly to the left from where she caught it. I was just working down that incline, thinking there's no way there's gonna be more fish that are gonna actually eat off this thing after all that commotion. And uh, we got two fish off of it, pretty funny. And now I'm just totally up in its business, ruining the spot, but you know, I'm pretty sure there's nothing left. If there is, I'm gonna get it right here under these leafy greens. So I'm thinking any little bit of this shallow timber that we see all the rest of the way through here until we can't go any further is gonna be where these fish are at. And it's looking like we might not have much opportunity left. There is um, what could be the end of it just in sight here. I think you can normally go back further. In fact, I'm almost positive, but right now everything is so shallow that uh, we barely even made it into the river system itself. All right, name of the game is the Jig and Texas Rig. So here you go. Devin's throwing just a straight up Texas rigged Bandito Bug. That was the blue baby color and she's got a quarter ounce Guggen Squad flipping weight. Both of us are using 30 pound braid to a 20 pound fluorocarbon leader with an FG knot. And I'm throwing a go-to rod and she is throwing a muscle rod. Essentially that's a seven foot medium heavy fast action and then a seven five heavy extra fast action. This place is probably normally five feet higher. Look at all this here. This is normally submerged. All right, the next spot that's looking good, y'all. Steep bank, we've got some rock. The sun is on it. The wind is blowing towards it. There's like nothing that could tell me there's not a fish in this little vicinity. Look, you got like, this is right where the river cuts too. Got another little shallow zone over there. So much opportunity right here. Huh. Shocking, there was nothing there. Watch your face, Finn. Watch your face, Aiden. Well, we ventured as far as you can now. Uh, I think you used to be able to go past this bridge and now there's a couple down trees that are not going to let you. So this is where we turn around. No, oh, just had a freaking bite. It wasn't a fake. It was code red. They're going to be oh stacked up in this goodness. timber right here. It was like, hit it. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Found him. <laughs> Found him in the back 40. <laughs> See ya. Oh. <laughs> oh, it looked like a trout. <laughs> no. They always die. We gotta get out of here. It's like half a foot everywhere. Almost there. Oh. Oh. The bottom down. There we go. There we go, off the tree, right next to the beaver dam as we're on our way out of here. We're basically back at the mouth of the creek, essentially. Nice one right in the top of the mouth. Whew. These fish are cold in this 50 degree water. That's four for the box, five fish total. Zeke, watch your back. Watch your back. Watch your back, Zeke. Watch your back. There we go. That's Quattro. Man, if this was a tourney today, we'd be, like, at least it wouldn't be bad. So we've had a really successful day out on this lake that we've never fished before and not gonna lie this fall transition not sure if it's been tough for you guys but it's been extremely tough uh, at least for me in being able to catch these fish get a weight on the big one and get the rest of these fish back in the water dead on 4.5 no way four and a half ah uh, whoa more I, than we thought i needed this fish for my sanity more than you guys know Oh god, gosh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> Let's just let him go right up here. You! <laughs> you! <laughs>